Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Gabriel. Good afternoon, everyone. As Gabriel mentioned, my name is Marcos Estrada with the Office of Environmental Quality and Sustainability in the city of Dallas. So thank you for joining today's presentation. Uh, today, we're gonna go over the city of Dallas's Green Business Certification Program. So we are uh, thrilled to have you all here to explore uh, an exciting opportunity for businesses to make a positive impact um, on their environment while also enhancing their uh, own operations. So today we will dive deeper into the, uh, the Green Business Certification Program, um, going over its benefits, the criteria, and the value that it brings to the businesses and also our community as a whole. We'll also highlight some businesses that have achieved certification and uh, the positive impacts they've made. Uh, at the city of Dallas, we uh, so we believe in the power of collaboration, especially between our local businesses and our community uh, to create a more sustainable future. That's why we developed the Green Business Certification Program, which is a, a comprehensive and a free service designed to assist businesses in uh, going green. And so through this program, we look to recognize and celebrate businesses that prioritize uh, waste prevention uh, by recycling and promoting sustainable practices, such as uh, reusing and reduction and composting in their daily operations. So whether it's a, a small like local shop or a bigger or large corporation, the, the Green Business Certification Program offers a chance you know, to be acknowledged and applauded for their commitment to sustainability. One of the, one of the other great things about the program is that it, it's open to any business that supports sustainability. It, it does not matter if they're just you know, beginning their sustainable journey and just trying to you know, start recycling or if they already implemented a lot of green practices and been doing that for years. And so the Green Business Program welcomes and recognizes all businesses that strive to, to help make a difference in the city of Dallas. So green business kind of ties into zero waste. And so when we examine waste in the city of Dallas, it, come, it becomes pretty clear that commercial and multifamily properties account for a lot of the waste generated in the city of Dallas. So it only makes sense to create a program that specifically addresses this sector, the, the business sector, as it has a potential to make a, a more substantial difference in waste reduction since most of the waste is actually coming from that sector and not, not the residents themselves. So aligning with our city's comprehensive um, solid waste management plan, our goal is to achieve zero waste. And so that plan is also called sometimes zero waste plan. Uh, so when, within this plan, one key initiative stands out and that's uh, providing commercial technical assistance with a focus on multifamily and commercial waste generators. And so by targeting these areas, we can hopefully maximize our efforts to reduce waste and move closer to what we're trying to achieve in the long run, which is a, a zero waste vision. So imagine the impact if we have, uh, let's say like a warehouse recycling their cardboard, or we could encourage restaurants to compost their food scraps. So, I mean, individually, it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you take into account all the businesses making these small steps, it leads to a, a significant progress to our journey towards achieving zero waste in Dallas. So every effort counts and each business that embraces um, different sustainability practices, you know, just brings us one step closer to our goal. So what is the Dallas Zero Waste Plan? So the, the, the zero, the current zero waste plan, it uh, aims to divert about 85% of the waste sent to the landfill. 
And so this is a pretty ambitious target that requires collective action and definitely some commitment from, from all parties involved. Uh, reusing and recycling and conservation programs uh, kind of form the foundation of zero waste, but it, it goes uh, beyond those practices, like uh, urging us to consider the entire life cycle of products and processes and systems. So thinking more holistically and not just about the specific item that may go into that um, sustainability program. So through zero waste approach, we recognize that our actions have consequences throughout a product's journey. So from the extraction and production of this uh, product to the disposal of that product, um, we can make more informed decisions and hopefully minimize waste, which also preserves resources and you know, drives sustainable practices across various industries and different sectors. So within this zero waste plan, we find uh, descriptions of policies and programs that play uh, a great role in achieving our zero waste plan by 2040. And one of these programs is the Green Business Certification Program, which we will explore a little further in the, during this presentation. Um, by implementing programs like the Green Business Program, we hope to foster a culture of sustainability and provide businesses with the tools and resources they need to contribute actively to our zero waste mission in the city. Uh, through this program, business can enhance their, hopefully enhance their waste management practices while engaging in recycling initiatives, uh, promoting reuse, and adopting other sustainable strategies that more likely align with the larger zero waste vision. So, we're gonna dive deeper into the zero waste plan and then understand the, the key principles and uh, the significant role that it plays in shaping how waste is uh, dealt with in the city. So, so together we can go over the, the green business and the initiatives uh, and then bring us closer to, hopefully bring us closer to our zero waste objective, which is about 85% waste diverted from the landfill. So going into the green business certification program itself, so the business would have to apply for this program. Um, and one way, one of the ways we connect with uh, different businesses is uh, kind of through a proactive approach. So we may go out and see a business and, and we may believe that they would be a good fit for the program. Like if we see that they already have recycling or they have other sustainability programs in place already, and so we reach out to them directly and we share the information and the benefits about the certification process and how it can enhance their sustainable efforts that they already have in place. So hopefully this targeted approach allows us to engage with the businesses who may not be aware of the program, but have the, you know, the potential to make a significant impact since they're already doing some sustainable programs already. The next step, would be to fill out the scorecard. This serves uh, in two ways. So it serves as an application and then also um, to verify what they're doing already for the, the certification process. So this is a, a comprehensive scorecard that covers uh, different aspects of sustainable practices. And it also provides businesses with the opportunity to showcase their uh, commitment to sustainability. So on the scorecard, the, the scoring system of the scorecard determines the uh, certification level for the business that are applying. Uh, so the higher the score on the scorecard sig signifies a, a higher level of certification. So reflecting on their dedication, and this also kind of reflects on what they're doing uh, for sustainable practices. So once the, the business have completed the scorecard, then they can submit it to us um, through email at DallasRecycles uh, at Dallas.gov. And then I also have that information at the end of the uh, presentation as well. So at this stage, we uh, once they submit it, we review this, the scorecard in detail. And then we also work closely with the business to confirm the information provided 
Uh, and then uh, if any questions come up, we address those and work through those. And th this step also allows us to ensure uh, the accuracy and provides an opportunity for the business to gain uh, further guidance and clarity on the, the whole process itself and any questions they may have. Um, then the review process can be conducted in two ways. So like uh, we could offer an option for an in-person site visit where we go out to the actual business and meet with them at their premise and we can discuss the scorecard and then also access their practices um, and see that um, face to face. Uh, or we could actually, uh, actually do this virtually, and then we can uh, do either Zoom or Microsoft Teams, and we, they can show us through the process and uh, kind of go over the, the same bill programs that they have already, and then verify the scorecard for this uh, certification process. So what's included in the Green Business Scorecard? So like I mentioned before, it's pretty comprehensive. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Um, in the next few slides, we'll explore the different categories included in the scorecard. So this is kind of like an assessment tool that helps businesses evaluate their uh, sustainable practices. And then the more they do, the more points they can earn toward their uh, certification. So the, the first section of the scorecard focuses on the di different aspects of recycling. So businesses are encouraged to uh, kind of go over their recycling programs, uh, which include the types of materials recycled, the kind of the av availability of the recycling bins, like can everyone recycle at the site or is it just for the office folks? Um, and the implementation of best practices um, kind of to maximize the recycling efforts. The scorecard also goes into the guidelines and policies that businesses have incorporated uh, to promote um, sustainability. So this section um, kind of goes over, you know, recycling practices, maybe like a sustainable procurement process and other environmentally friendly policies. Then the uh, third section, so businesses can earn more points on the scorecard um, if they provide alternatives to reduce uh, commuter pollution. And so that's that transportation section. This uh, category is uh, the significance of transportation and how that kind of affects the environmental impact of the business. The scorecard also um, acknowledges the importance of water conservation and definitely in how the businesses um, utilizes water conservation. This uh, section kind of goes over uh, implementing water saving measures such as uh, efficient irrigation systems, uh, low flow fixtures and uh, other water reuse uh, strategies. Then the fifth and final category in the scorecard uh, it focuses on different ways businesses can save uh, energy. And this uh, section kind of goes over the energy saving practices, including the use of energy efficient appliances and equipment, um, implementation of like lighting upgrades, like LED lights, and the uh, adoption of maybe like a renewable energy resources. So each category contributes to the overall score. And so allowing the, the business to earn more points and then the higher level of certification through the program. So the, the first section is recycling. Recycling is uh, often the the first step that comes to mind when uh, businesses start their sustainability journey. Uh, and it also plays a, a crucial role, like we mentioned, the zero waste. So it plays a, a big role in waste reduction and achieving our zero waste goals. By implementing a strong recycling uh, program, these businesses can signif significantly reduce the amount of waste sent to the landfills. And so this also helps us uh, increase the diversion rate. And so I mentioned diversion rate before. And so what that means is it's a measure, um, the percentage of waste that is diverted from the landfill. 
And so we can do this through recycling and other sustainable practices. And so the higher diversion rate, the business, the, you know, the more we're reaching our zero waste goal. So in this section, we like to emphasize the uh, recycling of conventional items. I mean, this, is, this includes uh, cardboard, metal, plastic, and glass, just like the, the same recycling program for residents. Uh, these materials are commonly found in day-to-day -day business operations, and recycling them is a, a great way to minimize waste and conserve valuable resources. But this uh, section also goes beyond conventional recycling, and it also encourages business to recycle what we call non-conventional items. So these items would include like uh, recycling of electronic waste, um, light bulbs, textiles, or any other items they could uh, you know, recycle or be reused. So by expanding those recycling efforts of uh, to non-conventional non items, businesses can help demonstrate um, their commitment, you know, to responsible waste management and then a more circular economy instead of just throwing stuff away, find a way to recycle it or reuse it. The second section uh, focuses on guidelines and policies that businesses can implement to support sustainability. So businesses are encouraged to become more familiar, as we mentioned, the zero uh, City of Dallas Zero Waste Plan. And this uh, helps to serve as a roadmap for achieving our sustainability goals. Uh, by understanding the plans, the overall plan objective and strategies, the, hopefully the business can align their practices according and contribute to the citywide effort. So implementing sustainable guidelines or policies is an effective way for a business to demonstrate their commitment to sustainability. For example, if a, a business can establish a policy that bans plastic water bottles and single use plastics, uh, and then also promote the use of reusable alternatives. So this doesn't only reduce waste, but it also encourages the sustainable consumer choices, um, which we kind of talked about thinking more holistically, not just the item itself, but the whole process of what happens to it. Uh, another example of sustainable guideline or policy is setting a diversion rate for the business. And so by actively monitoring and uh, looking to increase the percentage of waste diverted from landfills, the business can help contribute to the overall zero waste objective that we kind of keep harping on through this presentation. So this goal can be supported by implementing, like we mentioned, recycling programs, promoting composting, uh, adopting waste reduction and other waste reduction initiatives. And then additionally, it's always good to have a, a dedicated green team or an individual leading the charge of uh, sustainability. And so they can also earn additional points if they have that in place at their, at their place of work. Um, this showcases the business commitment to sustainability by having a designated team uh, responsible for driving sustainable initiatives or coordinating efforts and uh, you know, fostering kind of a, a culture around sustainability within their organization. The third section goes over transportation and uh, business can earn some points in this section by implementing various uh, transportation practices. One of the ways business can earn points is by participating in a bike sharing program. And so by promoting and encouraging employees to use their bikes for commuting to work or work-related travel, um, business can uh, support sustainable transportation alternatives. So this helps not only reduce the carbon emissions, but it also helps promote an employee health and well-being since they're you know, actually getting out there and riding the bike. Then offering telecommuting or a flex time policy is another effective way business can earn points in this transportation section. By providing employees with a flexible work from home or adjust their work hours, the business can uh, contribute to reducing the time spent commuting in cars. So 
let's say they allow their employees to kind of either come in early before the morning traffic or after the morning traffic. So you don't have to, you know, sit in the car for over an hour and help contribute to the pollution in the air. Um, they can also install electric vehicle stations uh, on the premises. Um, so this supports the facilitating the use of uh, electric vehicles. And then the, the business is encouraged to adopt a cleaner transportation option, which uh, also contributes to reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So uh, another way for transportation that can add more points is a commuter survey. And so by conducting the survey to kind of assess the employee's commuting habits and preferences, the business can gather some really good data to help develop a transportation plan that may help promote sustainability. And so a good example of a resource like this that business can utilize is a, a, a program called Try Parking It. And uh, this is a, a free platform for tracking and, and improving sustainable commuting choices. And the city of Dallas actually utilizes this program. And so it's called Try Parking It. And if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, I think that's a free program that anyone can use. So the next section is water conservation. Uh, one way business can conserve water is through landscaping. And one of the landscaping techniques is called xeriscaping. So by utilizing native plants that, that are well adapted by the local climate, these uh, require less water and uh, less maintenance. And so if businesses have like a xeriscaping at their location, they can reduce the amount of water that they need for their outdoor spaces. So it not only conserves water, but also promotes biodiversity and uh, reduces the need for chemical pesticides and fertilizers to keep those plants alive since they're already adapted to the climate. Uh, and then they can also add points if they install low flow appliances. Um, this is another great way to add some points on the water conservation section. Um, replacing outdated fixtures with low flow alternatives um, it can significantly reduce the amount of water they need without, usually without compromising much fun functionality or uh, comfort with those appliances. So businesses can also find any ways to reuse water. And this uh, also adds more points to the scorecard. Uh, for example, capturing and reusing rainwater for irrigation purposes is a, a great way to reduce the reliance on uh, water that's needed. And then additionally, businesses can consider harvesting condensation from the HVAC systems. And this also um, kind of supplements what water is needed in a day-to-day -day basis at the business. Then preserving water quality and quantity can also be achieved through uh, permeable surfaces on the properties. And so what this means is when it rains, it allows the, the rainwater to infiltrate the ground. And so this reduces stormwater runoff and it also promotes, uh, promotes natural filtration. And uh, so minimizing the stormwater runoff the businesses are also helping prevent pollution and protecting the bodies of water since when it, we get a heavy rain and it, it rains on the concrete, it just washes whatever's in that concrete into the storm gutters and goes directly into our uh, bodies of water. So like the creeks and the creeks will get into the river and then the river goes into the, the lakes and the ocean eventually. And so it helps, pre helps prevent that since the water is actually getting into the ground and not across the concrete surface, which is not permeable. Then for the last section, uh, energy efficiency. Uh, one way this can reduce energy is by implementing time lighting or occupancy sen uh, sensors in common areas. And so by controlling lighting based on the when it's in use, 
or you can schedule it, this can uh, hopefully minimize unnecessary energy consumption and energy waste throughout the day. They can also install Energy Star qualified equipment and appliances. And so this uh, Energy Star meets its uh, product, means it meets the energy efficiency standard, and it can uh, also help reduce the en energy consumption compared to um, conventional alternatives. And so <clears throat> tracking energy is also a good way to uh, add some points on the scorecard. And so by monitoring energy consumption and then identifying areas and high usage, business can make informed decisions and take uh, action to reduce energy waste. So utilizing energy tracking tools or software allows business to gain insights and uh, make decisions based on data, which will help uh, reduce their amount of energy they need throughout the day. Uh, they can also explore renewable energy resources. Um, installing So one way to do this is uh, installing solar panels or utilizing wind power as an alternative to energy source that can uh, significantly reduce the reliance on the uh, traditional grid-based electricity. Uh, this not only lowers the energy costs in the long term, but it also promotes the use, of course, of the clean and renewable energy. So in addition to all these, uh, if the building is designed to meet the uh, LEED certification, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, so if it meets those standards, that's a really great way for a business to enhance their um, energy performance. And so uh, LEED certified buildings have been proven to consume about 20, around 30% less energy compared to uh, conventional buildings that are not LEED certified. Mm. So there are four levels um, to the certification. And now that, so in the process, the business have completed the scorecard, uh, they turn it into us, and then it's time to determine the level, level of certification. And so this is based on their score and their sustainability efforts. So for the first um, recognition, the bronze. So this business recognized uh, demonstrated their commitment to implementing basic environmental best management practices uh, in at least two of the areas we discussed. These businesses have taken uh, some steps towards sustainability and have at least established a, kind of like a foundation for their uh, environmentally responsible operations. Then for the silver certification, they have surpassed the basic standards uh, in most areas of operation. Uh, they also show a strong commitment to sustainability and have implemented practices that go above and beyond minimum requirements. These businesses uh, usually actively focus on taking improvements and then uh, also a dedication to continuous uh, progress in the environment. Then the gold level uh, certification. So this uh, business meets the high level of environmental standards in most areas. Uh, they also implemented comprehensive and effective sustainable practices and uh, are recognized. These are recognized as leaders and their commitment to environment and actively pursue other innovations to further enhance their um, sustainability programs. Then our highest level of certification is the uh, platinum level certification. And these businesses, and we only have two so far, these businesses are our industry leaders and they kind of exemplify the highest standards of sustainability. And they have established themselves as role models um, for other businesses on how to operate with a kind of like sustainability in mind. So kind of going into why a business should become certified. Um, so of course, the environmental stewardship is a big part of it. Uh, one of the main motivations for business pursue, uh, certification is the commitment to environment. 
So by adopting sustainable practices, businesses can contribute to reducing their carbon footprint, they can conserve natural resources and uh, protect the environment for, of course, future generations as well. Uh, this environmental impact aligns with the broader sustainability goals in the city of Dallas. And then this also certification also showcases their business's dedication to responsible corporate citizenship. Um, going green can also lead to a significant cost savings for the business. By implementing, uh, let's say, energy saving measures, they can reduce their, how much money they, well, of course, they reduce the amount of energy they need, so resulting in a lower utility bill. Um, similarly, water conservation can lead to reduced water usage and lower water bills. And then reducing waste and implementing recycling programs can uh, minimize the disposal costs. And so these cost saving benefits not only contribute to the bottom line of the business, which is always great, but it also improves the overall operation and the efficiency of that operation. Um, when businesses apply to become certified, they also gain access to a free consultation service provided by the city of Dallas. These services offer some guidance and expertise in implementing and improving the practices, the same sustainable practices they already have in place. Um, and then they can also seek uh, advice on various other aspects such as energy efficiency, waste reduction, uh, and the other sections we kind of went over like water conservation. The consult consultation service provided uh, with the business is personalized because we know all businesses are different. So the recommendations are tailored to whatever their specific needs and what their goals are. Then the uh, recognition is another great reason to become certified. So uh, certified businesses receive recognition for the Green Business Program. Um, we promote the program social media on our social media pages and uh, there are, the businesses are also listed on our official City of Dallas Green, uh, Green Business website. And so hopefully this recognition helps enhance their reputation as uh, environmentally conscious, and it also highlights their commitment to sustainability. So businesses also receive a, a window decal and a certificate or plaque to showcase, showcase their um, accomplishment and help uh, communicate their status to um, customers, maybe stakeholders or anyone that kind of comes in contact with that business. So we have um, a good amount of businesses that have been certified already. And so um, these couple of businesses have been gold certified. So um, we would like to congratulate these uh, outstanding businesses that have achieved a gold level certification in the program. And so their commitment to sustainability and environmental stewardship um, kind of sets them apart as leaders in the industry since it's one of the highest levels of certification. So one of those uh, businesses is the Fairmount Hotel, which is located downtown. And this hotel actually has a pretty ex extensive beehive on top of their hotel. And they also do other sustainability programs throughout their, their, their business as well. And then we have Good Coworking, which is located in South Dallas. And they've actually been recertified in this past year. And so they actually attained a, a higher level of certification. And so they got the highest level um, platinum level certification when they got recertified. So they're the one other business that have been certified platinum. Then we also have the Mixed Restaurant, um, Richland Community College and Turn Compost who have also been gold certified. And so these businesses serve as role models, role models as I said before, as two other businesses, because um, they kind of demonstrate that sustainability and success kind of go hand in hand. And uh, through their actions, they also can contribute to creating a, a greener and more sustainable Dallas. And then, we have a, a short video. So in the video, we'll take a closer look 
at the Bank of America and their um, kind of their sustainable journey. And then this video also showcased their initiatives and their positive impact they've made on the environment. And so this is the first business that's been certified um, with that platinum level certification in the city of Dallas. Let me see if I can get this. Yeah, sorry about that. Some technical difficulties. It was working earlier, but it doesn't seem to be working now. Um, so I'll try to go over what they were doing from memory. So like I mentioned, they were the first business to be certified platinum level. And so they did this in a multiple of ways. They, of course, had recycling. They had the non-conventional recycling for batteries. They found ways to reduce their textiles and their furniture. Uh, they also had a great bike sharing program for the tenants of the building that they could use. And downtown's a great place to have a bike sharing program where you could just ride your bike uh, for a break. Or if you wanted to go to lunch somewhere that's a couple blocks away, you could um, use the bike sharing program. Um, if I mem remember correctly, they have a really good energy tracking system for the whole building that they can track and uh, utilize and kind of determine a really good game plan on how to cut down on the energy usage for the whole building. Um, yeah, so there's just a, a multiple of uh, programs they've implemented. Uh, in regards of sustainability and reducing waste and kind of helping the city of Dallas achieve their uh, zero waste goals. Sorry, that video didn't work. So yeah, that's uh, the end of the presentation. So thank you for uh, joining. Uh, so we kind of explored the green business program as a whole. And so if you have any business that come to mind that you think would benefit from participating in a program like this, we definitely encourage you to help us uh, kind of spread the word, let them know about the opportunity uh, to definitely enhance the environmental practices and also save money and then um, definitely receive some recognition from the city of Dallas for their sustainable efforts. So I'm not sure if there's any questions. I think we have a little bit of time. Yeah, there is a question in the chat, um, yes. Marcos. Uh -huh. do, you, it's, uh, do you have any suggestions on how we can encourage some of our favorite businesses to consider being certified? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, they can either re reach out to us or if you know a business that comes to mind, you can email us and let us know. And then we could reach out to them to see if they're interested. We can kind of give them a little spiel about the whole program and talk about the benefits and see if they're interested. So we can either reach out to them or they can reach out to us uh, through email is probably the, the best method of uh, communication. And so that's going to be uh, DallasRecycles at Dallas.gov. And this should be on that last, yeah, here on this last slide. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, it doesn't really question. matter which level, right? Um, whether it's yeah. gold, platinum, silver. I mean, any anything that they can do to incorporate these green practices and to be more sustainable at any it, level is going to be benefit to the environment here in Dallas. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mentioned that kind of a little bit towards the beginning of the presentation. So it doesn't really matter if they're just starting. So let's say they wanna start a sustainable program. So they wanna start recycling, then they can reach out to us and we can help them through that process. And then uh, in the same breath, we can also help them with the certification process kind of hand in hand since it goes together. And so they don't need to have sustainable practices already in place, but if they're looking to you know uh, implement some practices, then we can definitely help them out with that as well. 
Yeah. Um, and I yeah, see, I mean, point. it's just that there's so many different uh, areas that they can be sustainable in. I see that, and I hope it's okay for me to mention him, but Jeff Reska has watched your program today. And so we welcome you, Jeff, and so excited you're here. He's uh, the Dallas County Master Gardener. And so oh, nice. uh, you know, definitely a big, yeah. So say a little bit more about, you know, we definitely encourage these businesses. One of the things we encourage is for them to put in native and adaptive or even zero scape type uh plantings to help save water but also we still want to have green we still want to have pollinator plants you know things like that to help our world right yeah that's a good point yeah definitely we take an account of water conservation but of, of course the it also helps with the biodiversity to actually have plants on site so yeah we ought we, we definitely give some additional points on the scorecard uh for that category Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? No, I can I can mention something. This is Jeff, and um, I'm actually yeah I'm actually the county horticulturist. I'm the Dallas County horticulturist. Oh yeah. Texas A&M, yeah. Yeah. So I'm over the Master Gardener program. There are that's volunteers. right, over the Master Gardener program. Yeah. I apologize well, for saying that. I'm the well. only horticulturist the county has. So basically yes. I do, but all of our practices at Texas AM are earth kind practice, which is stewardship of the earth. And stewardship just walks hands in hand with what we do to try to sustain, you know, a, a nice level of ecological uh, you know, ecological balance. Mm -hmm. and just some of these things what well, one thing about it do you do you do some uh business trainings i know this is this is a, a sample of what what you put out there for for businesses but do you do uh, you know each step like landscape types and things like that individual trainings for businesses or is it just kind of an overall get a hold of you and see what they can you know see what they can do because i've done a lot of trainings for the city of dallas in different departments okay and earth and, and water wise and all that's been part of it so i mean we yeah. could, you know we could help with trainings of people that want to or businesses that want to understand how they can be earth time with their landscapes even landscape companies well one thing we're going to focus on i think in the future is starting to get you know starting to get some of these landscape companies most of them are for the most part but some of them we need to get them a little more ecologically balanced on what they're doing uh -huh. out there how they're, how they're doing their work so there's lots of opportunities I see here. So you guys are doing a great program. So thanks for inviting me, okay. Judy, to be here because it's very important and I can pass this on. Oh, yeah. You're quite Thank welcome, you. Jeff. Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. But yeah, going to your uh, trainings that you mentioned. Yeah, we do offer trainings, but not in uh, the sense of anything around horticulture yet. So maybe when the, the program builds, we can offer that. But right now we offer training and kind of building a recycling uh, program. And then also uh, some ways they can uh, improve their water conservation efforts. Okay. So we provide those two trainings, but hopefully in the future we can branch out and you know provide trainings on those other sections as well. Okay, if you need help, Judy can contact, can get in contact with you. You got you can contact me. So we're here to help okay. at AM. So just let us know what you need us to do. Awesome. Yeah, I think that would be a great addition to it. Um, we'll definitely um, you know, definitely talk about that. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. No, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you all again for stopping by and uh, joining us today. Thank right. you so much, Gabriel. We appreciate the Dallas Library so much. Yes, well, we, thank you, Gabriel. Thank yeah, you, we everybody. definitely appreciate it. Um, All right.